fortunate to have with us one of the world's foremost practitioners on this opening, world chess champion Anatoly Karpov. Hello. So Anatoly, uh, lately you've begun to favor the Cairo Khan rather a bit more in your important games. Yes, uh, for a time I played uh, more Spanish, Spanish uh, and uh, E5. But then I discovered that Karakan is not so positional and solid. Uh, Karakan became uh, more, more dynamic and uh, combinational. And so I found many, many interesting possibilities. Uh, like today we are going to discuss a game with Kamsky, in which I played uh, one of the biggest novelty in last years. And then we shall discuss a uh, uh, game with uh, Hort. I played with White. And then uh, the last game with Kasparov, uh, which we played uh, in the Naris tournament. Now, all three of these games have rather a different character. The game with Kamsky, you mentioned this is one of the greatest opening novelties in the last few years. Uh, the moment which you actually played this, this was not over the board discovery. This was pre-game analysis? Um, yes, uh, yes. Uh, I, I, I had uh, some problems uh, thinking when I played uh, one of the, of the game with Kasparov um, three or four years ago. And uh, so I was afraid of uh, continuation. And then I discovered at home that uh, this is a nice possibility. After e4, black plays c6, okay, white plays d5, d4, occupying the center in very classical style. Okay, now black plays d5. Now, it's my understanding the reason you prefer the Cairo Khan to the French defense is that you're able to uh, occupy the center and contest white's control without blocking in your queen's bishop. Uh, yes, uh, I, I believe that uh, white has uh, diff different possibilities now, of course, just to close the center with e5. Uh, or or defend the pawn on e4, and uh, then then uh, black has different possibilities also. But uh, the main okay, the main line is knight to d2. d2. Yes, and okay. then d takes e4, White. knight takes e4. And now uh, of later years, you've preferred the most solid continuation for black, the Smyslov variation, knight to d7. Uh, knight to d7. Yes, this is uh, more solid. Of course, there is one uh, one trip. Uh, once in Chess Olympiad, uh, carries one with queen e2, and automatically his opponent played knight g to f6 and knight d6 mate. So this was one game. <laughs> this is very exciting. Uh, okay. Yes, <laughs> this is funny. But of course, queen e2 is not the main uh, the main try for white. Uh, yes, of uh -huh. course not. <laughs> but it, it makes for a nice nice humor. Okay. Um, but the most serious tries for white here now are knight to f3, knight to g5, and bishop to c4. And each one of these, we, we will go ahead and take a look at a sample game uh, from, from your previous play. Uh, the game with Kamsky continued with uh, knight to g5. Knight g5, yes. This is, uh, uh, this is quite new. I mean, chess, in chess theory of this variation, it has maybe 15 years, not more, even less. Knight g5. Interesting idea. And the main line, uh, of course, main threat is if black plays h6, then knight e6 and then mate on h5 after, uh, after taking the knight. So for such a solid opening, this opening is full of little <laughs> tricks that uh, you have to be careful for in the early stages. Uh, that's right. That's right. And then uh, after knight g5, uh, black plays knight g to f6. OK. And now he continues with bishop to c4? Uh, no, bishop, bishop, uh, uh, bishop d3. d3. Yeah, this is the idea. Again, h6 is not possible because of knight e6. Okay, and mate with a, with we'll a bishop. We'll show our readers that if f e6, then bishop to d g6 mate. Okay. Uh, yes. So white, white uh, is continuing to uh, to make threats uh, to black king. So bishop g3 and then uh, e6. Yeah, and black yes. plays e6, avoiding the trap. Yes. No mate anymore. <laughs> okay. White continues his development. And also, the nice thing for white in this variation is that he keeps a lot of pieces on the board. Uh, right. And, and doesn't exchange so much. And, and of course, of course, bishop is closed now. Uh, the main idea of Karakan was, uh, at the beginning, just to open the bishop and uh, to have possibility to develop bishop uh, as a first. But uh, now you see the bishop is closed by knight and the pawn. 
-hmm. But of course, white lost temp with knight to g5. Mm -hmm. Okay, so after e6, knight back, then black continues development with bishop to d6. Uh, yes, again, if you play now uh, h6, uh, there is no mate, but white has, uh, has uh, good uh, initiative after taking here, pawn takes uh, and bishop, and bishop g6. And king is seven, and then the king side is blocked, and king in the center. And white just uh, mobilizes his forces and, and, and brings yes, them forward. Yes, some initiative. Mm -hmm. That's why black is playing first bishop to d6. Okay. And then uh, queen e2. Again, some, some threats. So h6, knight to e4. Okay, now here you exchange knights. Yes, now. And he takes to the queen. Now, of course, this sets the trap that if you were to castle, this would be a very unpleasant idea, right? <laughs> we'll just show our readers that if you were to castle, queen to h7 mate. Yes. This would be a very successful opening strategy for white. So you can say that queen e4 is preventing castle for black. Okay. And uh, so knight f6. Now white has two possibilities, just to come back with the queen on e2 or queen h4. And actually this, uh, this line I was afraid of when I played the first game with Kasparov in Amsterdam. And Kasparov just, uh, Kasparov just uh, came back with the queen to e2. Um, and uh, here, just uh, you see that uh, this, is, this is quite unpleasant because black, uh, if black uh, make castle, then bishop takes on h6. And uh, then you have uh, you have king in danger. Okay, uh, let, let's just take a look. If he castles, the idea of this is that now white would get a very dangerous attack by sacrificing with bishop takes h6. Right. After pawn takes and, and then queen, queen takes, takes, he has two pawns for the bishop. Okay, and he has several pieces visiting the black king. This That's right. And knight g5 is very unpleasant next move. Or white can just castle alongside and uh, to continue the atta their attack. So, so this, of course, isn't something you spent much time considering. And then uh, if you don't castle, if you play, for instance, bishop e7, but then white can play queen to g3. And then there is no castle because uh, bishop takes on h6, which is, uh, again, unpleasant. And, uh, so it's easy to see why in your first game with Kasparov, who especially is known as a fearsome attacking player, it's very easy to understand why you would want to avoid this. Yes. No, uh, during this game I, I was thinking that black can, can play c5 just to attack center. But still it's, it's unpleasant. It's, it's too slow. White can castle or bishop e3 and then long castle again. And you still uh, haven't solved the problem what to do with your own king. And, and bishop c8 as well. Yes. Uh, and uh, so we got we got this uh, uh, how to say parad paradoxical idea. This paradoxical idea. <laughs> paradoxical idea. Yes. And, this, and by uh, we, you mean uh, you're working with our uh, uh, our friend uh, Misha Padgayets. Yes, international master uh, Mikhail Padgayets from Odessa. Now, of course, we here in America, I tell people that Misha is a very well kept Russian secret, <laughs> 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 and he's uh, probably one of the strongest uh, non-playing uh, chess players in the world as far uh, as. He doesn't play so much actively, but his understanding of chess is at a very, very high level, it seems. Yes, uh, I, th I think he has no character as a fighter, but he understands chess very well, and uh, for a long time he's, uh, um, he's a theoretician, and uh, mm -hmm. in practice he is not so good, but uh, in theory and as a trainer he's very, mm -hmm. very strong. And so we, we analyzed this position, and then we found we found fantastic idea. King is seven. Now, I, I have to tell you, my, my, uh, my own second, I have a, a second for when I play in tournaments, Paul Hodges. Uh, you met him, a correspondence player, and, okay? Yes. And uh, Paul saw this game, and he just absolutely couldn't believe it. He's, Ron, you have to see this game. I'm like, what? And, and honestly, when you look at this position, the last piece that you would expect to move is the king. <laughs> I mean, the bishop, the pawn, and castle, you know, move the knight to offer a queen trade, move the queen. The last piece that would come to mind to actually move is the king. <laughs> right. So, so this is really a fantastic concept. And, but again, and even in the center. Yes, especially in the center. <laughs> you know. So you could expect maybe, I don't know, king d7 just to escape on the king, queen side. But king is 7 just, just in and, and to move into a pin. Uh, this is even more in incomprehensible. <laughs> yes.
And uh, at first it looks like well, maybe he was going to castle and changed his mind and touched the king and had to move it, you know. No, I, I, I remember face, uh, face of Gatwa. Uh, he, he stared at the board and he couldn't believe his eyes. First he saw that I was, uh, was just killing him. <laughs> no, but then uh, he started to think, and then he found out that uh, this is not such a bad idea, I think. And this is quite serious. This is actually a serious <laughs> move. Yeah. Very serious, yes, because mm -hmm. black, black is threatening just to play g5. The, the white queen has no squares, okay, except uh, for only, only queen h3 and then g4 fork. Mm -hmm. And so suddenly this, this joke is actually very serious. Yes, and it's not so easy to, to escape, because uh, possibility knight d2, for instance, just escape of the fork. But then uh, black plays g5, queen h3 only move, and then black plays e5. Mm -hmm. And it means that, uh, uh, that uh, black has much, much better developed. Mm -hmm. and, and, then, uh, and if you were to continue here, then he, say he goes queen e3 to pin the pawn, then you could even continue on with knight d5, harassing the white queen. Yes, because um, uh, this, this bishop is much worse now than this one. Yes. Because this is closed with the knight. Plus, you're the one that's actually going to play rook over and king back and mobilize much more rapidly. You know. That's right. And uh, so, so, for instance, I need just two moves, rook e8, king f8, and so this is uh, an artificial uh, castle. Yes. <laughs> so, so actually, the, the whole idea is actually brought about because the white queen actually has very limited number of squares. Yes, yes. So, so in, in a way, it's like you're using your king to actually attack the white queen. Uh, to, to trap the white queen. Yes, yes. This, this almost seems illegal. <laughs> <laughs> and so this was actually uh, voted as one of the most significant novelties of, like, certainly the last six months, but probably over the last several years. This is one of the most incredible uh, opening discoveries. Yes, uh, no, but, uh, but the, the same, the same uh, period, and uh, Murray played a very nice novelty in Russian defense. And so also just uh, white attacked knight in the center, and uh, so he, he left this knight without uh, defense, without mm -hmm. protection. And that, that too is fantastic, because that had been years and years, everyone had automatically retreated uh, the knight. That no, that, that position was just for maybe 150 years known, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. nobody, nobody considered this move. It was novelty on the move, uh, on move uh, four. So this is incredible as well. <laughs> yes, yes. So it shows that even with all the computers and chess, that there's still new things to be discovered. Something not, for, for mankind. Yet. Yes. Mm. And so, so after long thinking, uh, Kamsky played knight to e5. Now with knight to e5, of course, he's offering up a sacrifice of a pawn for you. Uh, yes. Uh, and probably this is the only way how, uh, how white can, uh, can struggle and, uh, and fight just, the initiative, just, maybe, uh, yes, just to try to, to find something. Mm -hmm. And uh, so black. So of course, you have to accept. Otherwise, yes. there's no point to you. Yes, of course. Black took, uh, then check on a5. Now, of course, the check's important because you need to attack the king and the pawn. Right. So he played c3. He played c3, yes. This okay. is better than uh, to defend with bishop. Queen took on e5. And now he played bishop e3. And bishop e3, and now now you can you can see the position. So white white sacrificed pawn. They have two bishops. They have open position, but still uh, still uh, there are a lot of resources for black to mm -hmm. uh, to defend this position. And uh, so queen b4 check is uh, main threat. Uh, that's why I had to play b6. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kamsky made a long castle. I play g5 just to avoid uh, bishop f4. Kamsky played queen a4, and, and this this position is very complicated. And uh, I think I think we need uh, more, much more games uh, just to to taste uh, to test uh, mm -hmm. uh, who is better in this. So actually, at this point, you've left the the realm of theoretical discussion, and it actually just became a struggle between you and the young rising uh, star Gata Kamsky. That's right. And in this particular case, as the defender with black, you were able to nullify his initiative. And then after difficulties on both sides and time trouble, finally you emerged victorious after about 50 moves or so. Yes, this was a game with uh, some mistakes, but very interesting and very sharp, mm -hmm. so, which, is, uh, which is not uh, usual for Karakan defense. in the mid, middle 
80s was uh, like Linares uh, for our days, uh, one of the strongest tournaments and uh, leading players uh, participated there with great pleasure. And uh, this was a tournament with uh, many, many interesting games and normally it was open fight over the chessboard. Uh, that time uh, White, White uh, had in mind another positional idea. Uh, just to to play for the bad bishop on c8, and uh, uh, I play I played with white uh, this line. Okay, now, now here we see you actually playing the white side against uh, your own favorite opening. This is a little unfair, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that that time I played uh, Karakan defend uh, defend uh, mostly with white. Mm -hmm. And uh, so so you've had tremendous experience both trying to beat the Karakan and supporting supporting this opening. Mm, uh, yes. No. no now I have, like, like in Spanish, I have uh, big experience with white and black, and so you know so many fine things, and uh, this is very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Now, one of the most popular continuations is actually uh, bishop to c4 on the fourth no, move. Here we're looking at knight f3. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, then, then uh, black plays knight f6, knight takes, knight takes, mm -hmm. and now the main idea is how to how to stop this bishop uh, from getting out mm -hmm. and uh, 95 so this this was uh, this was uh, quite often played uh, that that years and now of course if you force e6 then then the bishop you is fulfilled bad. your yeah. idea bishop so so, is bad. That, so that that idea would be seen if he tried to play g6 because basically this bishop has two ways to come out right he can either play e6 and come out this way or g6 and fianchetto so if he G6 goes for g6, then we'll see the idea you were just discussing, right? You play bishop to here, make him play pawn to e6, and now we can see that he's boxed in this one, right? That's right. That's right. And uh, but th that's that's why uh, Black started to play bishop e6 to prevent to prevent bishop c4. Now was this actually your discovery? I saw you played this with great success in a match with uh, Sokolov at one time. Uh, you played bishop e6 bishop e6 is uh, not so bad but still this is passive because then you need another move just to to bring bishop uh, active uh, and active also position. white plays c4 and white gets a little more space a little more free hand yes. uh, later in the middle game right and another possibility is just to to kick out this knight immediately from uh, e5 mm -hmm. and then uh, white could play bishop e5 or knight to d3 if knight d3 is on g6 and uh, this is slightly better for white. I, I had uh, such game with uh, a grandmaster from Holland, uh, Gennady Sasonka, mm -hmm. with g6. And uh, he could equalize the game. White well, has a little more space, but maybe black can play c5 at one moment. And c5 and or e5, yes. Uh, black has mm -hmm. two, two ideas, and uh, mm -hmm. it's not easy to stop. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I had a training game with Fritz, the computer, like this where I was able and to play e5 with black, trade a lot of pieces, and simplify down to a draw, which, for black, it's okay. Yes. <laughs> now, at that time, though, theory wasn't so well developed, and Horde just uh, mechanically went ahead and said, oh, I can develop my bishop, and yes, he developed bishop his bishop. Five. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then this is, uh, it seems to be very early, but uh, to just, three, yes. just to go ahead and secure the center, right? All right. And now, not, not feeling in any danger, <laughs> he went ahead and just played e6. He figured but, now... But what to do? Mm -hmm. This is the question. This is the point. Well, he has to do something to continue his yes, development with this Yes, just bishop. to, to mm -hmm. continue develop in uh, his development. And then, uh, if you play g6, then why you play well, bishop then, f5? And also, bishop c4 is very strong, right? Because right. then you box in the bishop outside the pawn chain. No, but also queen b3 is threat, because then... A uh, double attack, Double right? attack, yes. Uh -huh. So... Hort played to e6. Now, Hort at this time is uh, one of the world's uh, Czechoslovakian grandmasters. He was one of the strongest players at one time during this period. Yes, yes, he was candidate. And, uh, and, uh, did he have any suspicion that he was already getting into a little difficulty? Uh, I don't think he, at this moment uh, he, he yeah. had the, the idea. Uh -huh. It was only after the, your next few moves that he began to realize there was a little drop of poison in this knight jump. No, but pr probably he had in mind uh, the position w which we got because he thought that uh, he thought black it would okay. be it would be close position and then he could uh, he could defend. Mm -hmm. But uh, now we shall see how. So now you start I more or less a blitzkrieg attack, through. right? You play g4 and attack his bishop. Bishop g6. If you play bishop e4, then f3. 
and then still you have to go back, or if you play here, then c4 and bishop, and is, bishop trapped. is trapped. Right. This is even worse than being on the other side of the pawn chain. <laughs> <laughs> so bishop g6, h4, mm -hmm. and then uh, Hort played h5. Then uh, knight takes. Now, of course, when you win h4, you're threatening to trap his bishop. So yes, he had to do something. H h5, f3, and c4. Right. So I took on g6, pawn took, and then g5. So black played knight to d5. It's, it's clear, because uh, if you play just knight to d7, then white wins immediately with bishop d3. There is There's simply no way to protect this. No, that's right. Mm, next right. move, queen up and the pawn is That's up. why he played knight to d5. And probably he had in mind this position, because uh, then what happens? Uh, that you have uh, good, uh, good blockade on the white squares, mm -hmm. And uh, all, all you have to do really is to defend your two points, and then everything is barricaded in. Yes, if you can bring knight e7 and f5, and if you can make queen d7, and if you castle, then black could be even better because this pawn is weak. Mm -hmm. This this bishop is good, but uh, not not and so much. This pawn future. is backward on an open file. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, uh, the black nature of the position, the bishops don't function so well. All right. And then, uh, for instance, if you have even bishop d6, then this bishop is bad. So it means that uh, white, white must find uh, uh, something very quick and active. So, so what, you, what you're saying here is white has actually compromised his structure, but he has a short-term initiative. But if you don't capitalize on this and make something out of it, then in the long term, black could actually have very good prospects. Right. And so, so what, what happened that... Uh, so, so you I started out by playing queen c2 first to yes. go after this. Yes. Okay. Now, how, how much time did you think? Do you remember how much time you spent on the next few moves? Because it seems like this is a critical moment in the game. Um, I think I spent a lot of time here because uh, I was not sure if where, where I need my bishop to h3, uh, d3, or c4. And so... He, he protected with king g7. King okay. f7, yes. King f7. And then uh, I think I played rook, rook h3. h3. Rook h3. Of course, now I have uh, I have threat rook f3 and take on g6. Now, now see here, Anatoly, most people looking at it, you know, especially in a five-minute game, they'd say, oh, the pawn on g6, I'll develop a piece, and they'll play bishop d3, they would develop a piece with a threat, and they would be very happy with themselves. <laughs> but then after knight back and knight up, black would achieve the position that you were discussing, where yes, he's then, like Yes, then you lose, you lose one tempo, which is decisive for this position. Uh -huh. If you are not... Uh, too quick, then uh, just one move can change the, uh, yes. how to say, the, the evaluation, of, evaluation the of, the, of the whole position, yes. Mm -hmm. So in the game, though, rook you, after, after much thought, you decided on this very precise move order, rook, a, rook h3. Yes. Okay. And now, now uh, I fought black to, to retreat with the knight. Because the threat was simply to check and, right. and come in. So now you, you apparently decided, after all your deliberations, that the bishop actually belonged on c4, because here it zeroes in on this very vulnerable point. Uh, yes. Now, now I have this threat, rook e3. You're yeah, simply trying to win and the pawn. And if knight d5, then rook f3. And you go back. That's why black must play knight f5, and then rook f3. Mm -hmm. And so king cannot go to g8 because, thi because of this pawn. So now his uh, queen d7 is the only move. Now, of course, his strategy basically is trying to barricade in on the light squares. We can see that he's putting all his pieces on the light squares, trying to create kind of a fortress. Yes, and uh, no, but uh, when uh, when I was thinking uh, before queen c2 and then rook h3, uh, it was not easy to understand that position is uh, good, but uh, but probably position demands sacrifice. And so I had to discover for myself that without the sacrifice of exchange on f5, I cannot break through. And then you have no prospects. Yes. And so uh, this is not easy to, to understand immediately. It took a long time. But of course, compensation is fantastic. But then when you sacrifice uh, having uh, such a nice position, you think, no, maybe it's easier to play another way. But mm -hmm. when you realize, no, this is the only way, then you sacrifice. So actually, not only is this good, the sacrifice, but it's actually quite necessary. I think so. Mm -hmm. So now, of course, this pawn is pinned, so he must take with the g-pawn. G-pawn takes and queen takes and on f5. queen five. takes f5 check. Now the pawn is pinned by this bishop. So now we see why it was so important to put the bishop on this diagonal. 
yeah, just to have uh, to have eye on on the king on uh, seven. Mm -hmm. So king is seven, and then very important move: queen e4. Queen e4, not queen e5, because then uh, in many variations black would have uh, queen d6 with the tempo or rook e8, and then uh, king f7 and bishop d6. So b uh, queen e4 is much stronger. Also, queen uh, e4 keeps him from putting another pawn on g6. On g6, yes. And uh, I want to to keep this square free for my bishop, bishop f4 and bishop e5. So actually, every move here, it's very valuable to think exactly which precise square the piece belongs. Yes. So I think uh, he played the... Uh, no, he played rook e8 here. Rook e8, yes. Okay, he, wants to, he wants to protect and try to run and hide with the king. And now you, you played bishop. Bishop f4. And now he tried king to run d8 only move. and hide with the king. Yes. So he wants to, to, to develop bishop on d6 and just to exchange. That's why queen e5. Now it's very strong. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I don't allow king c8 because of mate on b8. Okay. And uh, so he played rook to g8. And now it's just a question of bringing your last piece into the attack. And yes, uh, even it's not so important that my king could be here or anywhere else because uh, mm -hmm. important is development and just I need, you need uh, one, more, one, more one more strong piece just to break mm -hmm. the position. So this is long castle. And this is not so bad too, just incidentally to be opposite these guys. <laughs> <laughs> so g6, this is the only way how to develop. Mm -hmm. And now? Rook e1, yes. This is very important. This is very important. Now, pawn on e6 is handy. And, uh, and very hard to defend. Yes. So bishop g7. And now it's uh, very elegant. Uh, with uh, uh, An epaulet. <laughs> so now here you yes. played queen b8 check. Okay. Yes. He played king up. And now, of course, most people at this point would expect you simply to take the pawn. And you've got two pawns, and this is still under attack, and that's quite nice. And of course, yes, that would lead to a win also eventually. winning, also yes. winning, yes. But now, instead, you played rook takes pawn check, right? Yes, and so this is, this is, uh, at, might, at might. first, this looks like a mistake, because, well, your queen is under attack. It looks like he can simply take this. Uh, but in actuality, he resigned here. Yes, he resigned because, uh, because of two possibilities. Uh, so if king here, then the easiest way just to take on e8, queen takes on e8, and then bishop d6 mate. And uh, if black would take on e6 with the queen, then queen c7, c7 check. Seven check. Only move queen d7. No, uh, well, if, queen d if queen d7, then bishop d6 mate. Which yes, is also this nice. This is a finish that I like. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. this and is also this nice. Because this shows the bishop's working. And uh, if uh, king f8, then uh, there are two possibilities. Well, bishop d6 check, perhaps. Yes. And then this if queen takes and queen f7 mate. This is the most easiest. This yes. is yes. probably the uh, most fitting conclusion. Which didn't, didn't want to get he on didn't, the board. He didn't want to see this <laughs> on the demonstration board. Greatest tournament in chess history, category 18, and uh, all the leading ch chess chess masters or grandmasters were participating there. And uh, I think that this tournament really was uh, a fighting tournament. So many uh, games with the result, no draws, and as you know, mm -hmm. uh, the, or the organizer of this tournament he hates the draws. Uh, Even fighting draws, that, he hates. That's Luis Rentero, right? <laughs> yes, Luis Rentero, yes. I understand some kind of players actually have in their contracts that they don't get paid if they make a short game. No, no, no. Uh, this is the uh, other way around. He pays extra starting fee if you don't make draws, uh, short draws, and if you promise you, you fight a full game. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, now before the tournament, Gary Kasparov made some comment. Gary, of course, won the tournament the last two years, right? With very, right. very good scores, okay? And so he made comments, since you had so many of the world's best players, that whoever won this should be world tournament champion, I believe, uh, is what he said, something like this. Yes, so this year and previous year. But previous year, we were fighting for the first place. And uh, even two rounds before the end, we had the same number of points. And then I, I had white pieces, and then I, 
I wanted to, 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 to get a lead. And I, I took risks too much. Then I lost the game, and then Kasparov won the tournament. But this year, I was leading from the first round till the, till the last one. I won six games in a row, and this was, uh, uh, this was a game from uh, round seven. Round seven. So at this point, when you played Gary this time, you had black, but you also had a lead in, in the tournament. Uh, that's right. So for this uh, situation, you felt the Cairo Khan was the appropriate defense. Uh, but uh, last games with him, I played Cairo Khan always. So mm -hmm. there was no reason to change. OK, so after d4, d5. He plays the uh, most standard way for white with knight to d2. Right, pawn takes. Knight takes. Knight takes. And then knight d7. And then this is. Okay. Now, the other games we saw were with knight to g5, your game with Gadakamsky, and knight, knight to f3, like you played against Hort. That's right. And G Gary plays bishop c4. So this is the uh, most known and uh, the oldest line uh, for, for right. Knight g to f6, knight g5, e6, queen to e2. And uh, it's, it's uh, well known since match uh, for the world title between uh, Tal and Batvinnik, 1960-61, two matches they played. So black plays knight to b6, bishop d3. Of course, uh, this pawn is poisoned. OK, mm. bishop d3 was a continuation in your games with Jan Timon from the uh, FIDE World Championship, I, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> OK, and now Gary instead plays uh, the other variation, and the other alternative is bishop to b3, right? Uh, that's right. And uh, also, also, you can take pawn on d4, because if the queen, queen takes, takes d4, then white, white has tempo with knight okay, to let's three. say the queen goes back, or where else would the yes. queen go? Let's say queen back then home. Then knight e5, and there is no protection for f7 pawn. OK. But of course, that's a very basic trap. You, you didn't play queen takes d4 against Gary, right? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. So this moment, h6 is necessary move, just, uh, just to bring this knight back. Knight comes to f3. And now you played an interesting move, a5. Can you tell us a little of the history about this move? Yeah, this move, uh, this move is very important because uh, when, when you don't play a5, the main idea of white is just to have attack on the king's side. And uh, normally black has, black has, uh, black has uh, short castle. And then bishop is very strong here. And this bishop is uh, always threatening to, to take the pawn on h6. And then you have g4, h4, very active position. And uh, in most variations, white just uh, make, uh, makes a long castle. a5 is fighting against uh, the idea of his long castle, because uh, black is threatening to trap bishop on b3. And now there are three uh, main uh, variations, a4, c3, and a3. But uh, what I wanted to say that uh, a4, uh, there was a uh, famous ga game between uh, Tal and Petrosyan. Petrosyan won this game, I think, in 20 moves. Uh, Black played c5, and then this was the line, bishop f4. And then white made long castle, and that moment Black played c4, bishop took on c4, and knight took on a4, and then white position just collapsed. And that's why, that's why uh, white started to play more carefully, uh, and c3 is uh, is a nice idea. Mm, uh, just just to protect pawn on d4 and, and yes, to have this to, come. to have this possibility with bishop on c2. Mm -hmm. So c5 now. Okay, but now Gary uh, decided he wanted to play both, and he played a3. And Yasser Sarwan annotating gives us a question mark. Why, why does Gary play a3 here? No, a3 is important because uh, uh, if, you, if you develop this bishop, then a4, a3 could be quite dangerous. And, and then uh, white, have, white has problems with c3. For instance, if you play bishop f4, then this variation is quite possible. Then you play a3, and then b3 is the only move, and then black has another, another temp with bishop on f4, and then you have to come back with the bishop. So this is not so, so nice for white. That's why after c5, 
because part of played A3. And what's your opinion of A3? You think it's necessary for white to play A3? Uh, so this is this is not bad. This is not bad, and Kasparov played already this uh, this line uh, against uh, uh, English grandmaster uh, Jonathan Spielman. Uh, Spielman played immediately A4, Bishop C2, and then Spielman played A3. Is that game ended in a draw? Uh, yes, here? yes. Uh, but but White had better position, and then it was complicated, and then it was draw at the end. So probably Gary was hoping to repeat that against you. Uh, and get a similar type position. Yes, may maybe. But of course, c5 is improvement and clear imp improvement. c5. Then, wh what? c5, a3, so you and queen then c7? queen c7. So I, I, I just keep uh, I just keep this possibility a4 or c4, and uh, n not uh, not in all positions I need pawn on a4. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just uh, I just. Uh, we'll have opportunity later on to play b5 and b4. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't want to, you don't commit to make yourself. yes to make clear what I want to do on the queen side. I see. So now Gary went straight ahead with knight to e5, but he has to do something to get the other knight out. Yes, it's not clear what to do because if you play bishop to e3, then uh, knight knight goes to d5 and then bishop is uh, attacked, and uh, so black has. Uh, like has good activity. Yes, yes, sufficient position. Mm -hmm. So Gary played knight here, and I guess Gary wants to just continue bringing the other knight out, castling, and still hoping for some, some attack on the king side. Yes, Kasparov played uh, at once knight e5, so it means that he analyzed this position at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I took on uh, d4, pawn took on d4, and then uh, uh, black played a4 now. Instead of a4, it was very funny tactical possibility. Uh, bishop takes a3. Now, of course, at first, this looks incomprehensible, because <laughs> not only can the rook take, but the pawn can take. Yes. So how does this tactic work? Uh, so of course, this pawn is well protected. and uh, uh, So first, rook takes doesn't work, right? Yes, yeah, then, then queen takes c1. Then queen c1. takes bishop here. OK. And it's quite clear. This is yeah. quite good for you. OK. So if pawn takes, then what happens? Then queen, queen gives check on c3, and this is fork. And king and rook. And king and rook. OK. However, you didn't play bishop takes a3 in the game. I didn't play bishop take a3. a3. And uh, the funny thing was that um, in the press center, uh, nobody saw bishop takes a3. I think only only Lubomir Lubovich mentioned this possibility. But the first one who discovered this was uh, Fritz, the <laughs> computer program. And uh, so it, it, it showed immediately bishop takes a3 and black is better. Now of course, with a computer, if you're winning a pawn, you're better. Yes, but this is not so clear because after bishop takes a3, bishop takes h6. And then bishop takes b2. So now, yes. now you would call this desperados, right? Where uh, once a piece is on pre, then you put another piece on pre. Yes, yes. Of course, if white takes on g7, then, then white is, uh, is in bad shape. Uh, because bishop takes, and then queen c1 check is threat, queen c3 mm. check is threat. But uh, white just recaptures bishop on b2, and then rook takes h6 only move. And then knight g1 to f3. And it's not clear how to, to get back this rook in, into the play. And uh, so white has possibility of castle and then rook c1. So there is pressure over a black position. And it continued, instead of playing bishop takes a3, you continued with a4. Yes, I played a4. This is just continuing more in a strategical main. And I was thinking here for a long time, because it was not clear for me just to play a4 or to keep this uh, again as a possibility. But then I, I decided e4, uh, this is the moment for a4. So he bishop has a choice. C2. He went this way with the bishop. No, there is no choice. Because after bishop a2, bishop takes a3 is working already. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's just simple. Yes, now, now it's, it's uh, much better because if he takes there, I just recapture and it can. It is not possible to because take the check. pawn because of check. Yes. Okay. So he has 
no choice, actually. No he, choice. He simply bishop, has to come back with the yes. bishop. Then mm -hmm. bishop d7. Now here he gave up his knight for your bishop. Uh, yes, I was a little bit surprised. So Perhaps he should just continue and develop his knight? But he's worried about your rook coming he to c8. He was worried, yes. He was worried about rook c8. And then uh, two bishops again. And we see after rook c8, this line. Yes. Because if, if you play now bishop to d3, then queen takes c1 check, rook takes, rook takes check, king d2 only move, and then rook takes rook. So mm -hmm. black, is winning. black is winning. And maybe after rook c8, he had to play bishop d1, which is, which is of course, not the uh, not dream he, he would have at home when he analyzed this position. So that's why he took on d7. I recapture it with the uh, knight, I believe. This, yes. this clears out the knight and allows for your b-pawn to advance and leaves the other knight to come to d5, right? And also I keep my on f4. I don't allow bishop f4, so mm -hmm. queen is on c7. Okay, now and he here, played... He, here he played very funny. He played queen d1. Yes. But this seems a little strange. No, but still, if knight f3, then, then, uh, then what is possible? Rook c8 is possible. Must play bishop to d1, which is, uh, again, yeah, not Yeah, we'll not just so show nice. that if, if bishop takes a4, now mm -hmm. the pawn is still d indirectly defended because of the double attack. Yeah, that's right. So this is very important. So then he would have to play bishop back to d1, which, again, is very passive, right? All right. Mm -hmm. so. so instead, though, he played queen d1, right? Queen to d1, yes. But did this move surprise? Surprising? Yes, this is this is uh, uh, this is funny that White has to play uh, back with the queen, and uh, but of course positionally this is not so bad because uh, knight knight comes to e2 and then to c3 to attack these pawns. Uh, so by, by chance this is not so bad as it should be. <laughs> <laughs> so actually this is dual double edge because the pawn like cramps him. But it can also become very exposed and can become a liability if you're not careful. Uh, that's right. That's right. Pawn on a4. That's why I, I was trying to say always at mm -hmm. the beginning that uh, this is not so easy to decide to push pawn on a4 or mm -hmm. just to keep it on a5. Yeah. The pawn is the one piece that once you push it, you can't push it back. Yes, never. <laughs> this is the general rule. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now you continued your development with bishop d6. Uh, yes, bishop d6. Uh, and probably uh, it was not the most accurate way. Uh, I, I think I could play better, I could play b5. Just immediately. Uh, yes, I wanted to keep this, uh, this possibility. Uh, but, but then probably I needed to play first knight b6 or knight d5. After b5, then another knight on f6 on b6. And only after this to develop bishop. Mm -hmm. Because so when, when I played bishop d6, I was not in time. So you're saying you should have gone ahead and consolidated your grip on the queen side and then... Yes, yeah, just, just to, to, to block the position with b5, mm -hmm. knight d5, knight f6, just to, to put solid mm -hmm. pressure, positional p pressure, and then to develop bishop. Okay. So now he played knight e2. Knight e2. And then... And here you played knight to d5, preparing to meet him. Yes, otherwise he is threatening knight c3, and then I'm in, I'm in trouble. Taking yes. this one. Yes, so I have to play knight to d5. And then, uh, then he played... Uh, Bishop to d2. Only move. Now, pawn is... It's actually threatened. Under, under, yes. Before, under you pressure. always had queen a5 check. That's now right. Now bishop d2 stops your check. And then I have to play b5. Then he played knight to c3. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what I was trying to tell, that instead of bishop d6, I could have knight on f6. And then in this you position, see? you simply could play rook over or and queen And in this position, I, I just could, mm, could mm -hmm. defend the pawn. No, maybe with queen first, queen c6. Just, mm -hmm. just uh, keeping, pressure. keeping pressure and pawn on g2, mm -hmm. which was not so good uh, for, for white. I, I had this threat. But now I have no time for this. And so I had to take. On c3. And he took with the bishop? He took with the bishop. And that, that threatens d5 to open. Yes, to, to open everything. So I, I had to play knight, knight to f6. So d5 now doesn't work because knight takes on d5. 
pawn takes bishop takes pawn and then rook g8. Okay, so now he he went ahead and went after your weak pawn with queen to d3. Okay. And yes, queen to d3. Now d5 probably threat. Now, according to the press reports I read, this was a moment of big excitement in the press room. They were wondering how you're going to handle this because your pawn is under attack, and if you castle. Then, of course, Gary loves to have two bishops aimed at your king, and then he might play pawn to d5 and, and try to attack you. Uh, yes. So this is a, another exciting moment here. <laughs> now, of course, of course, I could play queen c6. But then white could make a castle, because uh, pawn is not, uh, is not attacked anymore. And then, and then it's difficult for black to make a next move. Because if you just bring knight to d5, then it's very difficult to, to castle. And uh, white, white just could play rook to c1, and then bishop d1, bishop f3. Uh, but of course, uh, I, had, I had in mind another idea. So this is very much is like your game with Kamsky now. Uh, yes. Yes, right here in the middle of everything, you move the last piece that we would expect. Yes, he is attacking pawn, just to, um, there is threat to take pawn with a check. With check? Uh, yes, which is important, but then black doesn't pay attention, knight d5. This is the most strong, so I keep, I keep uh, control in the center, and if queen takes on b5, check, I play again knight king e7, like game with Skamsky you mentioned, and then uh, there is no danger for and black. And now, actually, you would get a very powerful counterattack with the rook coming over, and you have everything. To b8 or c8, two mm -hmm. bishops, still two bishops on c c line, c file. Mm -hmm. And so after after this, Kasparov, Kasparov started to be in big trouble, and uh, he decided to save his bishop. Yes. After all, the only thing White has is the two bishops in this position. Yes. So bishop d2 was, uh, was the only move. And then, again, I don't need castle. I just play king e7. OK, so now he tries to contest you on the c-file with rook c1. Rook c1. And then I played queen to c4. Now here you offer the exchange of queens. Yeah, this is very important. Because if, if I would play rook to c8, then Kasparov would play bishop to d1. Of course, uh, there is possibility to sacrifice uh, queen for rook and bishop, but this is not very clear. Black cannot lose, mm -hmm. but probably b black cannot win. That's why, that's why I, I wanted to keep pressure. So you to wanted keep to keep pressure. pressure on him? Yes, queen to c4. And then I think now Kasparov made mistake. He played king to e2 instead of playing g3 immediately. After which Black had uh, had pressure, but it was not clear how to how to win the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, so after long thinking, Kasparov played king to e2. Of course, he doesn't want to make castle because of uh, coming ending. He mm -hmm. wants he wants to have uh, uh, his king in the center, closer to weak weak pawns on the queen side. Uh, and so he played king e2, just uh, just having in mind. Uh, uh, probably the same idea I had. This was just uh, bishop takes a four, rook d1, and then I could play rook d8. This is almost winning. I played, uh, I played uh, rook h to b8. So you played rook h b8 immediately? Yes. And then Kasparov found a nice way how to almost defend the position, or uh, no, it was g3. Okay. And now you went ahead and exchanged queens? Yes, I took. He took with the bishop, b4, and then and then after rook a1, only only theoretical advantage. Hmm. I had to exchange on a3. So you played b takes a3, pawn takes, takes a3, a3, rook b3. So now you actually win a pawn. Yes. So just just few moves. Bishop c2 only move. I take on a, a3, rook, bishop, rook a1. So now he regains the pawn on a4, but you still come out one pawn yes. ahead. Yes, right? he, he is losing this pawn. So but here it's he not took this one, you exchanged, he took here, and you took here. Okay. And then f4 is important. 
So on uh, other level, probably black could win, but on, uh, on the level of Kasparov, it's not possible to win such position. And it, so was, it was draw just in, uh, in maybe 10 moves. Uh -huh. And so this game was actually a credit to both players, a uh, very hard struggle. <laughs> and, but it also shows the viability of the Cairo Khan defense. Yes, again, we could see absolutely new ideas in this, in this game.